Okay. So, Tim asked me a few months, five, six months ago, because raise your hand if you want to be a, a FIFA referee or assistant referee. Okay, good. Now, no disrespect to anybody. Raise your hand if all you want to do is be a state referee or a grade 8. Good for you. 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 Okay? But this still pertains to you. Right? Because you've got to be able to do what you need to do to get there. Right? You, you do a service to the game and you're doing a service to the game and you're doing a service to the game. And that's exactly the way it should be. Everybody has a place in this business. Okay? And the guys that want to give back to the grade eights and sevens and work with the little kids, God love you guys. Because if it wasn't for you guys, nobody would be there to do games on the weekend. Right? Because we'll get into this in a little bit. But I heard this last night right down the road. Somebody got a phone call and they said, well, look, um, I can either go to FSA, the amateurs, or I just got the phone call to see if I would go over to do Bradenton. Now, I'm just using numbers. I don't know what the facts are. $40 versus $150. Well, the person that he was talking to said, well, who did you commit to first? Well, the amateurs. Well, guess what? That's where you're supposed to be going. Okay, but too many of you all see the dollar signs in your eyes. All right? So, what do you think it takes to be at the top of the game? Anyone? Well, here, I'm going to ask my friend from Puerto Rico. <laughs> Please stand up and tell everybody in your mind what it takes or took. Let me rephrase that. Took to get to the top. The fitness is very important. The fitness is first. Fitness is first. This is my way. Okay. Thank you. So he just said it, right? So my second bullet point is sacrifices. How many of y'all have a family? Wife, kids? Husband. Husband. <laughs> I normally say husband and wife. I apologize. Right? I apologize. Husband and wife. Right? I, I used to say significant other, and then I got chastised for that. So I, husband or wife, kids. All right, so which is more important? Your family, your kids, or to go referee game? Kevin says your family. Janessa says your family. 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 You know what? You're right. A lot of people do it the other way around. Right? We have a lot of FIFA referees and assistant referees that have been divorced and married three or four times. Right? Because they get serious with somebody. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. i got to go do this game. Right? i got to go do this game. Me, my sacrifice, I didn't get married until eight years ago. Once my career was done, once my travel was done, once 2010 was done, okay, because 2010 was my last chance to go to the World Cup. Once 2010 was done, I said, look, I got a new book. I got a new chapter to add to my book. And that's called a marriage. For years, from 2004 until 2010, my wife had been hounding me saying, when are we going to get married? And I said, it's not fair to you for me to get a phone call today to say I'm going to go spend 15 days in Honduras starting January 20th. It's not fair to you that I go to China to represent the United States in 2008 at the Olympics for 35 days and I'm going to leave my wife and kids at home. For me, that was a sacrifice that I did. Okay? A lot of sacrifices. That's just one. All right? Waiting to get married. Because I knew what was going to happen. Okay? But also, she and I also, she understood and it took some people in this room helping her out, understand that at the time soccer was first. Right? And now she understands the passion of this. She's been around it. But it took a long time. Right? Then, <clears throat> fitness daily. Right? 
There's times that I'm doing fitness at 10 o'clock at night because I got to get it done. Okay? There's times that we fly all day long, get off the, get off the plane, go to the hotel and do fitness again because we have to get that stuff out. So fitness isn't just running up and down a field. Fitness is taking care of the body totally. And rest, rest meaning sleep, is something that they've been beating on us even more about, as well as hydration. Okay? I was glad to hear some of y'all say that we have any more water over here because hydration, Matt Hockey, the head sports scientist, issued all of the, the referees a water bottle. And on the outside of the water bottle, it says... Four hours, eight hours, 12 hours, 16. It's telling them how much water they need to be putting into this. On the other side it says one hour flight, two hour flight, three hour flight, four hour flight. Okay, because the longer you're in the air, the more you get dehydrated. That's what we, we've learned. <clears throat> Professionalism. Professionalism isn't a word that you can just throw out. Professionalism is your actions on and off the field, your interactions with your peers, your interactions with administrators, your interactions with assessors, slash evaluators, slash coaches, whatever we want to call them. And then being ready for the opportunity. All right? Nine times out of ten, this modern game gives you more than one opportunity. Twenty years ago, we were given one opportunity. Fifteen years ago, we were given one opportunity. You don't get multiple opportunities. Okay? So you need to be ready at the moment. Can't say, oh, I'll get it better the next time. This is your one and only time. Okay? So the professionalism, off the field, that's how you are right now, alright? That's what we're talking about. The uh, president of uh, Florida Amateurs invited y'all to the, to the social tonight, right? Okay, no problem. Go, make your appearance, and leave. Okay? Go, make your appearance, and if he offers you an adult beverage and you're of age, Drink the abo uh, one adult beverage and leave. Part of the issue is, is one leads to two, two leads to three, le three leads to five, five leads to twelve, and then the last thing on there, social media, it gets posted on uh, Facebook, Instaslam, uh, Twitter, um, <laughs> crap chat, um, right? And we'll come back to that as well with social media here in a few minutes. And then on the field, the way you interact and address people, the way you interact with coaches, players, parents, your teammates. Guys, there's only two others of the, besides yourself. And some of y'all talk to each other and treat each other. Sometimes it's, you're afraid to tell them the truth. And, and when the truth needs to be told. And then other times you want to keep blowing smoke. It's okay, you did a good job. Yeah, you missed five over the ball tackles, but that wasn't your fault. You just missed it. Tell them the truth. Okay? The truth hurts sometimes. Alright? God love his soul. Terry Vaughn. And if any of y'all have ever heard of him, Terry and I, Vaughn and I grew up together. There was times you would sit in a room just like that or in a, like that kitchen in there with about four or five of us and you'd think we were coming da down to blows because we were arguing and fighting about opinions on different situations. Right? That happened in games. But I guarantee you, he had his, my back and I had his back. All right, but that was good stuff that happened on the field. On the field, he's right, I'm right. When you're talking to the other people, because you have to support each other. Okay? As well as, guess what? On the field, your fitness doesn't show. Well, it does show. Let me take that back. 25 yards behind play. 
right? Not being able to be in control. And in company of the colleagues, all right? I say this honestly, and the people, John David, I know, will say the same thing. Rodney will give you a lot of it, right? David will tell you some of these things. The friendship you get from this business, I can go to New Zealand and stay for free. I can go to Scotland and stay for free. I can go to England and stay for free and do whatever I want with those people because of the friendships that we've made over this business, okay? And that's what y'all have to cultivate. Heck, I think 20 years ago, if I'd have had all the, all the uh, internets and, and cell phones that we do now, I'd ha probably have a bigger network than I do, right? But back then, it was a long-distance phone call. But when we got to see each other, it was like we hadn't seen each other for years and we didn't want to leave again, okay? It's sort of like seeing your grandmother or grandfather when they live so far away. But the friendship and the company of the colleagues, that's something that you all have to cultivate and you all have to nurture, all right? And that's where I go back to saying tough love sometimes is where the friendship comes. Because if you want me to tell you the truth, oh, you did a great job today. All right? Excellent job. Man, I don't want to ever work with him again. Okay? And we've said that about people. Right? But I've also said that to their face. To say, you want to know the truth? Yeah, tell me the truth. Bang, bang, bang. Just like I've said... I've said to those people, tell me the truth. Man, go raise the flag. Today the whistle did not do well for you. Okay? But that's the part of this business. <clears throat> and then travel. Travel's all on you. You got to know. <laughs> I should have known driving through Orlando today. Right? Took me two and a half, two hours and 45 minutes to get here from my house. Should have known, should have planned ahead, didn't. Okay? So when you're driving, you got to know, plan for the worst. Because you get to the city ahead of time, you're there a couple hours early, oh good, I get to get out, I can maybe find a park, walk around, I can go to the mall, walk around, stretch my legs, as opposed to 15 minutes before the game, you're getting there. Okay? True story. Were you with me and Natalie? No. So I got a USL game in Tampa last year. Y'all probably heard this, right? <laughs> you know when that hurricane was coming through last year? Not the one this past 2017, 2016. Where everybody was bugging out. Well, Kermit's got to go to Tampa to do a Tampa Bay game. Kickoff was at 7. I left right after school at 2. 6.40. 6.40. I arrived. Yeah. Got out of the car, ran into the stadium, changed clothes. They said, oh, let's go, kick off. I'm like, whoa, whoa, we got to... Oh, crap. The fourth, I almost had to take my spot. But I didn't have it. I mean... You would think leaving 230 Pearson, Florida, I would make it to Tampa well before that. But I didn't realize that I-4 from Altamont Springs to Champions Gate would be a parking lot. And then I got past Champions Gate and, oh, Lakeland was a parking lot. So, plan ahead. Air travel. Mother Nature likes to make things happen, right? So... You have to be in control of a lot of those things, right? Know ahead of time what's going to happen. We, we have what we call a, oh, uh, an oh crap plan, all right? I can get out on this flight. I'm in good. This is my last option, okay? For me, I, I fly out of Daytona. I know I can sometimes get one last flight out of Orlando, but that's another 45-minute drive from the Daytona airport. All right, so you have to plan these things ahead of time. 99% of, of travel is all on you. You're in charge of those things. You know your schedule better than anybody else. If you're dealing with a travel agent, they'll work around your schedule. But you have to plan those things. Right? Coming to this tournament, you shouldn't have, what, Thursday night was arrival or Friday? Friday. Friday. Okay. 
Because first games were this morning, right? Or no, there was some yesterday. Friday, 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 1 o'clock. So what time did Abram or Ken or Tim or who, who was in charge? Who's in charge? Where's Mike? Oh, he's doing a sign. Okay, good. What time did Mike tell you all he wanted you all here? Okay. And I'm, I'm sure some of y'all like got here early, so you didn't have to worry about any of that, right? Okay. Or you got here the night before you so you could sleep, right? So that's what we're talking about. Now let's go to social media. Social media is the downfall of the world. Okay? And I can't remember the FIFA referee's name, but he lost two appointments to two high, high, high caliber games. Why? Because he was sitting at a table, and this was back before social media, so that's back when Rodney had brown hair and Charlie Coomer had hair. Okay? <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. But the point to this is, is he was sitting at a table, and this was uh, Heineken, this was Amstel, and this was St. Polly's Girl. And there was another one here, and there was about 12 of them. He doesn't drink. But the picture got posted. Look at Dave Smith the night before Man U Liverpool. Just so happened he had a bad performance. But this picture was taken December 24th, 2017. It was posted today. And he had his bad performance yesterday. But it wasn't posted on social media. It was posted in the newspaper. I want you all that have social media, I want you all to think, those of you all that raised your hand and said you want to be at the top, how many of your social media pictures have alcoholic beverages in front of them? And when you do that, 10 years from now, I'm going to bring it up right before you go do a game and say this was you last night. You never know when it's going to be shown. Okay? Anytime pictures are taken with me and there's alcoholic beverages on the table, that's what happens. They get put away. There's no pictures with me pointing at Budweiser. Okay? Partly because of my other job, but I never know when this one's going to be posted either. Okay? So you all have to take responsibility for those things. It's all cool when you're in college. That's why I said, sometimes I think, thank God they didn't have social media back when I was in college, because we'd all been in trouble. Right, Kevin? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all right? How many of you all have a path to your success to be a at the top. How many of you all say in two years I want to be here, four years I want to be here, eight years I want to be here, ten years I want to be there? How many of you all have sat down with that plan? I see one hand go up. I see two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my next question, those of you all that raised your hand, do you have a fallback plan? Yeah? Okay. What do I mean by that? Well, okay. It didn't work out. A few bumps in the road came. You didn't plan on having kids, now you got three. You didn't plan on being unemployed, looking for work. You didn't plan on being shipped to Billings, Montana because of your job. And there's no soccer in Billings, Montana, let me tell you. All right. I've been there. It was a nice secluded retreat, let me tell you. No cell phone, no internet. I got a lot of good sleep that week. But you need to have fallback plans. Okay? Because, trust me, this isn't going to be your only business. This is, I like to call this a doggy dog world, and we're all wearing milk bones. Okay? And I won't finish that statement. <clears throat> Teamwork. Teamwork on the field. 
Teamwork off the field. Teamwork in anything you do. Okay? The statement of work, smarter, not harder. How many of y'all heard that statement? How does that pertain to this business? Majid? You're a nurse, right? Or soon to be a nurse? Soon to be. Okay. Put your professional life into this business as a nurse. You, if you're caring for a patient, it's a, it's, it's a coordinated effort. One person can't, can't succeed if the whole group isn't pulling their, their share. It's imperative to have teamwork. Okay. Does everybody understand what he said? All right, so my whole thing is, is the person, everybody wants to be the person that blows the whistle. All right? Why does everybody want to be the one the person that blows the whistle? No, don't look to your left. Why does everybody want to be the one to blow the whistle? Your name? Me? Yeah. Pablo. Pablo. Why does everybody want to be the one to blow the whistle? One that gets all the attention. One that gets all the attention. So, I would say they're, they're in an attention seeker then, right? So what is it that what we say as referees? Who's the best referee on the field? Who was the best referee of the World Cup? The one that's not seen or heard, right? But you just said you wanted, want the attention, right? No, no, no. I, I'm not saying you. <laughs> I like that. No, no, not me, not me, not me. <laughs> I've seen him referee, by the way. He doesn't want the attention brought to him. He, he's very good at that. He, he hides it in the backside. But no, really, back to what I'm saying. Think about what I'm really asking you, right? Is the person that wants to blow the whistle wants the attention. Or, not really the attention, control. Right? They want to be in charge. And I want you all to think about some of the people you all have worked with. Right? And the ones that you like working with. <coughs> okay? And when I say that, oh, wait a minute. I don't mean blowing the whistle working with them. I mean, you're holding the flag. They're blowing the whistle. How many of those people do you like working with? And then flip it the other way around. How many do you not like working with that have the whistle? Why do I say that? Anyone have an idea? JJ, why do you think I said that? I think each person has a different personality in terms of when they hold the whistle and when they hold the flag. So I think it can rub some people the wrong way if they're working together as a team, or they may not mean, like it kind of has different perspectives. Miguel, why do you think I said that? Well, kind of reiterate what JJ says. Different personalities, different perspective on the game, and sometimes you work with somebody and they take a back seat to a position where they think they're, somebody said, in charge or of the game. Luis, attorney, or soon to be, right? Hopefully. So. Hopefully. So what do you think? Because you, you've played both of those boats, haven't you? Yeah. Um, well, I think when you, uh, when you gave that hypothetical, Kind of imagine yourself with the control and then flip it and say, now picture you on the side. Mm -hmm. I mean, I pictured myself when you said, um, imagine yourself in the game. I already assumed or pictured myself in the whistle, but then when you flipped it, what if you have the flag? It, it, I mean, it also takes teamwork to say, okay, this is your day and I'm going to give my best for you. Exactly. Why did we choose assistant referees? Some people say, well, you took a back seat. No. I'm only making our team better. Right? I'm only making the team better. I'm going to put it in American football sense. If we didn't have an offensive line, what would those other seven guys be doing? Getting up. Getting up. Getting up a whole lot. Looking at the ceiling a whole lot, right? So, as an assistant referee, you're there to assist. And the referees that 
I've had a lot of referees that say, oh, we're a team and I'm empowering you to do things, right? And then as soon as that whistle blows, hey, I'm over here still. No, you're not, right? They forget about you. Or when I was in France, okay, the referee told me in the first game I did, call out of bounds and offside. 2005, I'm a FIFA assistant referee. Right? He says, all, I, all you need to do tonight is call out of bounds and offside. Thought I was back in 1985. Not a problem. Boop. All right? Five and a half minutes in, France guy comes over, two-footed tackle, over the top of the ball, makes contact four inches below the kneecap. Right? Ball goes out for a throw-in. <laughs> <laughs> as I'm grunting, hoping that the guy gets up. After the match, the inspector walks in. Five and a half minutes in, Kermit, what were you doing? What do you mean? Tell me about that situation that you called the out throw in for. Oh, you mean the two-footed tackle over the top of the ball, just below the knee, blah, blah, blah? Yeah, that one. Why didn't you call it? Oh, the referee told me all I needed to call was out of bounds and offside. So that's all I did, out of bounds and offside. He turned and looked at him, is that what you said? Yes. Oh, we'll be getting back to you later. Okay, Kermit, you did what you were supposed to do tonight. Have a good night. See ya. But I was told to do that. A lot of you all, when you're made to raise the flag, you think, I don't like that foul. Or the other way around. Ah, oh, that's not a foul. Keep playing. But the referee's been calling it that way. So you as an assistant referee sometimes have to work and do things that aren't part of your makeup. Just like when you get the whistle, you've got to remember that they're part of your team and you've got to treat them with the respect that you want to be treated with. Okay, I've had many referees blowing the whistle say, he cursed you out, it's no big deal. Don't let it bother you. And then 35 minutes later when they get cursed out, they throw them out and then have a fit. And then at, at post game is even better because it's like, why are you upset? no big deal. That's what I'm saying to them. It was no big deal at halftime, but now it is. You know, so you just have to. Okay, and that leads me into mental toughness. This game is a very, very cruel game. And I'm not talking the game of soccer. I'm talking the game of match officiating. The game of football is cruel, but when it goes our way, everything looks great. But when it's not going our way, it keeps rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling downhill. So mental toughness has to be huge. And mental toughness during the match is huge, but post match is even is huger. That's not a word, but it'll work. <laughs> it'll work for this, right? It's not a correct word, but it'll work for it's huger, right? Why? Because mentally, we're going to keep thinking about it. Keep going and going and going. And that was Saturday. And now on Sunday, you're still thinking about it. And on Monday, you're thinking about it. And on Tuesday, you're thinking about it. On Wednesday, you got another game. And guess what? Still thinking about it. Okay? So mentally, we have to be tough. You have to have what we call rocks. Right? Rock is somebody that you can scream and holler and tell how bad everything is. Right? And then they go, what's the big deal? Everybody's alive. Nobody's hurt. Why are you getting all upset about this? Right? And it's normally your wife or your husband or for me before I got married, my parents or Ed or Rod or... Rod's son, Chris. Chris and I had a lot of these heart-to-hearts and mental toughness. And... But it takes those things. As well as that's where the colleagues and the friendship comes. I pick up the phone, or I t for you all it's texting. For me it was a pick up the phone. Say, hey Chris, man, this is what happened. Oh, you got tape of it? Yeah, alright, we'll look at it. Sunday afternoon. Backyard barbecue, we were looking at tapes. 
Uh, this is, uh, you know, you were right. You should have done this or you should have done that. Or Kermit, what were you thinking? But that was the mental toughness part. And Chris will tell you about being an AR and he'll never want to be an AR again. He gets assigned to Tampa. He's enjoying the game. All of a sudden they're on a breakaway. He's still standing in midfield enjoying the game. <laughs> and this is back... Y'all know what a VCR tape is? <laughs> Cassette tapes, right? Oh, okay. VHS? On Monday morning, you did not want the FedEx or the UPS guy to pull up in your front door with a tape. Because that meant you did something wrong. Alright? So... And then when you start to fall or fail, you don't strive to fail, do you? So you've got to have somebody there to pick you back up, grab you and say, it's all going to be okay. Forget about it. Life goes on. Right? And that's what happens. All right? So are you ready for the opportunity? <clears throat> Every single game is an opportunity. Every time you step on a field. Practice. And then you're going to say to me, well, I can't practice. Sure you can. All right? You can practice amongst yourself. Or, as I like to say, next weekend I want this, ro this row to take U10 games. And everything that the assessors in the back told you this week, Weekend, I want you to practice everything they told you on the U10 games. Why? Because for us, practice is win during the games. But I can't practice on a combine game. I can't practice on an MLS preseason game. I can't practice during MLS. I have to practice with myself. Or I practice... Okay, my job is an assistant referee watching games. You all can do the same thing. Watch the game, and instead of watching to see whether Athletic Madrid is going to beat Barcelona, right, or Chivas is going to beat America, right, try to blow the whistle right as the referee blows the whistle. Or try to call the offside before the assistant referee calls the offside. That's another way I practice. Okay? And you've got to be humble in this business. Okay? And if you're not going to be humble, you're not going to go far. Because you're only good, as good as your last whistle, your last decision, or your last non-decision. Okay? If... If... <coughs> if... if you're not humble and you want to tell everybody how great you are, okay, they'll listen. Then you got to guess what? After you say how great you are, you know what you got to do then? You got to prove it. Right? You got to prove it. Opportunities appear and disappear quickly. What does that mean? Luis, I'm going to bring you. Up. I'm going to call you out again. All right. Two years ago, where were you at? And anybody know who you were? Where'd you go after Southern Regional? Oh. Why? Because somebody saw him there, and said, "Wait, wait, wait a minute. I, I don't see this name on the list. Where is he at?" And then he takes advantage of his opportunity, goes to Youth Nationals, does well there, and puts his name on the radar. Because this summer, I'm asked, why is Luis not doing games in Florida? Right? I don't know. I've been a little busy with the tournament scene. So I send an email or a text? Text. text. Luis, what's going on with you? Why haven't you done any games? Reply. Concentrating on law school. Not a problem. My reply to the, my people. Concentrating on law school. Great. Not a problem. 
He's still on our radar. Don't let him fall off. But he took advantage of his opportunities. And that goes back to what I'm saying. 20 years ago, you get one shot and you're out. You say I'm studying or working on my law school degree? All right, contact us in 10 years when you're done. Those people aren't even around 10 years later. Okay, so don't worry about that. You never know who's watching. Every single game is perfect working on your skills. Okay? And respect the game at all levels. And that's why I want the U10 games. Okay? When I first started working at the high level, I would go back to the U10 games for a weekend. Why? It was a way to decompress. Have fun. Laugh. Because you might only call 2,000 that game. But just to watch them all run around and they didn't care who won. What they care about? Playing. Playing and the Capri Suns at halftime and the orange slices. That's the truth. Am I, I mean, seriously. That's what they're, it's all about. So when you want to get the reality check, go back there.